Creating custom logos is one of the best ways to earn more money as a designer, but with Illustrator having what feels like an endless amount of tools, which ones are actually best for the job? Well, in this video, I'll be going through the six essential tools I use when customizing typography so you can learn how to take an original typeface and transform it into a distinct logo that clients will happily pay big money for. So I've got the font I'll be customizing, which is Comic Sans. I'm using this font because it's widely regarded as one of the worst fonts. So when I transform it into something better, you'll see the true power of these tools. But before I start manipulating this font, I need to outline it which converts it into a vector and makes it editable. Now, without this step, I wouldn't be able to edit the typeface. With that done, I'm going to ungroup the word comic and adjust the spacing of the letters. I feel like they're just a bit too far apart at the moment, making it really uneasy on the eyes. Now it's time to equip our first tool, the eraser. So with this selected, I'm going to slice the rounded edges off of all the letters because nobody needs a font that round. But you'll also notice that I'm not using the default round head. Instead, I'm pressing the Option or Alt key, which changes it into a rectangle, allowing me to cut with precision. If you didn't know already, this tool is really great for getting rid of unwanted shapes and paths. So the typeface is looking a little odd, but stay with me here. I'm going to grab the next tool, the ruler. And I'm going to use this as a guide to ensure that the letters sit on a baseline. So this will help create structure between the letters. You can also right click and choose show grid for even more precision. Now, if you haven't figured out already, customizing a typeface is all about just trusting the process. There will be times where it looks odd, but you need to trust the process. With the letters aligned to the baseline, I'm now going to select the next tool, which is the Pathfinder. Before I use it, I'm just going to add some movement into the font by adjusting the two C's using the rectangle tool. So I'm doing this because the font currently looks a little flat and boring. So with that done, now I'm going to use the Pathfinder tool to unite these paths together. So this tool is really handy when you want to combine several shapes. Now it's time to customize some letters, and this means it's time to equip our next tool, which is a personal favorite of mine, the pencil tool. But before I start customizing, I need to double click the pencil tool icon and make sure that this option is checked. Otherwise, I won't be able to adjust any of the letters. So with that done, I'm going to first customize the M. Now I've chosen this letter because it already has some movement within it and it's located in the center of the word, meaning that if I add some subtle customization, it will be the centerpiece for this word, drawing your eyes in that direction. Now the rule when using this tool is to click on the original letter, move with the tool to make the adjustment, and then make sure you return it to the original letter and it will add your customization. P.S. If you're looking to improve your pencil tool skills and create custom typography and illustrations, make sure to download my free pencil tool worksheet from my website. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Now, when using the pencil tool, it's often combined with another tool known as its right hand man. Think Batman and Robin. And this tool yeah. is the smooth tool. So with this equipped, I'm just smoothing out the customizations I've made to the letter. This just ensures that there's no harsh lines and everything flows smoothly. Now here's a quick hack. If you double click the pencil tool icon and make sure that this option is ticked, pressing Option or Alt when the pencil tool is selected will instantly switch to the smooth tool, allowing you to easily switch between the two. Now the word looks okay, but it does need tidying up. So I'm gonna select the next tool, which is the direct selection tool and get to work. First, I'm going to adjust the top of the C's by just rounding them slightly as they currently feel too harsh. With that done, I need to make a few other tweaks to ensure I'm maintaining consistency between letters. So with the O and M, they need to follow the same angle as the top of the C, so I'll rotate it slightly. And then lastly, I just need to tidy up the I by removing some anchor points and then follow the same direction. The last thing I'm going to do is add a border to give some depth to the word. To do this, I'll go to Object, Path, Offset Path, and this will add a border around my type. Now for the finishing touch, I'm going to add some color. So I always add color last to ensure that it does not affect the legibility of my work when I'm designing it. So here's the before and after. You've seen me take Comic Sans, 
a font that has become synonymous with amateur design and transformed it into something usable in a reasonable amount of time. But this is just one example of customization. Here are a few pieces of my work where I've taken the original font and transformed it into a custom logo type for a brand. If you want to see how I created one of these, then you need to watch this video here where I design a brand identity from scratch. See you over there.